25 years ago on August 24, 1992, Hurricane Andrew devastated South Florida. It came with a tab of $26.5 billion. The costliest storm until Katrina took over the top spot in 2005 with $108 billion. Andrew took away 65 lives, damaged 23,000 homes, and destroyed another 985. And don't forget the 1951 mobile homes demolished by its powerful winds. Homes can be rebuilt, but the memory of Andrew has left scars in everyone's memories. 25 years later, we have embraced another. Hurricane Harvey has made a landfall in Texas on August 25, 2017. You see, we had no major first hurricane since Wilma's 2005 visit. And while Texas had been spared hurricane force winds since Brett in 1999, now the distant memories have all come back with another powerful storm. Most people have little memory of Hurricane Andrew, and a few can even forget about Katrina and the wounds she inflicted on us. But we were spared from nature's fury when we stayed major hurricane free for the last 142 months. Is it pure luck? Or is there something we didn't know? Let's assume we were just lucky to be sheltered from hurricanes. Did you know the United States had 23 hurricanes in the 1940s, 20 in 1950, 15 in the 1960s, 12 in the 70s, 17 in the 1980s, 15 in the 1990s, and 19 between 2000 to 2009, but only six since 2010. Most of us have expected to have the worst hurricane season because of global warming, but hurricanes seem to hop outside the gate. Do you recall how many hurricanes heading our way have turned away before landfall? I mean, other than Katrina and Wilma, which formed in the Gulf of Mexico, Basically, if a hurricane formed there, no matter where it turns, it will hit one of the Gulf states, unless it makes a U-turn to hit Cuba, or make a 120 degree turn to revisit Mexico. Actually, I recall it has happened a few times. No wonder Mexico often thought God was on our side. Actually, if you look at the hurricane hits in the past 12 years since 2005, you will realize how incredibly lucky we were. Many weekend before landfall are mysteriously turned away. I mean, except for a few that formed in the Gulf of Mexico. But even when the hits seem to be imminent, they may still flee south of the border. Like Hurricane Ingrid in 2013 and Hurricane Franklin in August 2017. You may not remember, but Cuban President Fidel Castro once alleged that the U.S. attempted to use hurricanes as weapons against Cuba. He said that 30 years ago when the U.S. conducted Project Storm Fury, an experiment started in 1962 and ended in 1983. You know, actually weaponized hurricanes would not be such a bad idea. At least we could avoid diplomatic showdowns like the ones which have escalated tension with North Korea. Let's put it this way. If you dare to fire a missile at us, we will blow you away with winds. Is that possible? Based on the information I've found, no, not really. But the question is, can we trust what we were told? Let's start with a quick history on Project Storm Fury. It was an attempt to weaken tropical cyclones, a project which was run by the United States government. The hypothesis was that silver iodide can cause supercooled water in the storm to freeze, disrupting the inner structure of the hurricane. In plain words, if we can freeze your eyes, you lose your power and fall. However, despite several successful tests on hurricanes, the government said the hypothesis was incorrect. Hmm, funny that no one was fired over that. This is how the project started. 
Number one, cloud seeding was first attempted by Vincent Schaefer and Irving Langmuir in 1946. Schaefer caused a major snowstorm by seeding a cloud. Secondly, that led to the funding of Project Storm Fury, which lasted over 20 years from 1962. It was an expensive project. And if it was really flawed, don't you think Congress would have pulled the plug a long time ago? In its first test conducted in 1962, it was a success when five of the six testing clouds work like a charm. And on August 23, 1963, they conducted the hurricane test on Hurricane Blah. After correcting some initial mistakes, the storm's eye wall started to fall apart. It was replaced by another eye wall with a larger radius, but the sustained winds fell by 20%. However, the government called the results quote, encouraging but inconclusive. Unbelievable, right? Next, it took a few years before they worked on the next target. Hurricane Debbie in 1969. 13 planes flew out to the storm. And on the first day, wind speeds fell by 31%. On the second day, wind speeds fell by 18%. Both changes were consistent with Storm Fury's working hypothesis. Despite the success, the Navy withdrew from the project in the early 70s. So now the project's focus was to understand rather than to modify tropical cyclones. Several years later, a decision was made to research Pacific storms in Asia instead of the storms threatening the United States. However, China protested against such projects. While Japan said they'd like to be hit by hurricanes since it is the main source of their water supply. Then when no funding could be found to replace the aging aircrafts, in the middle of 1983, Storm Fury was canceled. Now imagine we've had the technologies to possibly combat a storm since 70 years ago, but we are still defenseless against coming hurricanes. Does that make any sense? This makes me wonder if we really abandon Project Storm Fury or just put it underground. Despite global warming, we've had very few hurricanes in the last 12 years. Let me give you a quick summary. Let's start with Hurricane Matthew. In October 2016, Matthew devastated the Southeast. Florida in particular, as a Category 4 storm, before weakening to a Category 1 and making landfall in South Carolina. Hurricane Hermine, September 2016, this Category 1 storm was the first hurricane to hit Florida since Hurricane Wilma in 2005. Hurricane Arthur, July 2014. This storm whipped across North Carolina's outer banks with winds of 100 miles per hour, making it a Category 2. Hurricane Sandy, October 2012. Superstorm Sandy, the largest Atlantic system on record, slammed into New Jersey. It was the deadliest hurricane to hit the northeastern U.S. in 40 years and the second costliest in our nation's history. Hurricane Isaac, August 2012. This deadly Category 1 storm hit the coast of Louisiana and Mississippi right around the seventh anniversary of Hurricane Katrina. Hurricane Irene, September 2011. Irene hit North Carolina as a Category 1 storm. The storm caused major flooding in the Northeast, and Irene's effects were felt along the entire eastern seaboard. Hurricane Ike, September 2008. The last hurricane to strike Texas was Hurricane Ike, a powerful Category 2 storm that caused billions in damage and became the third most costly storm in the U.S., 
after Hurricanes Sandy and Katrina. Hurricane Gustav. September 2008, tens of thousands evacuated before this Category 2 storm hit the Louisiana coast. New Orleans' first major storm since Katrina. Hurricane Dolly. July 2008. Dolly made landfall in Texas as a Category 2 storm and gradually weakened to a tropical storm as it progressed. Hurricane Umberto, September 2007. Although initially weak, this record-breaking storm intensified rapidly before making landfall in Texas as a Category 1 storm. Hurricane Wilma, October 2005. This intense Category 3 storm wrecked havoc when it made landfall in Florida. Wilma was one of the most powerful storms in the very active 2005 hurricane season. Hurricane Rita, September 2005. Often referred to as the Forgotten Storm, this Category 3 hurricane hit shortly after Katrina in a much less populated area along the Texas-Louisiana border. Hurricane Katrina, August 2005. This Category 3 storm rocked Louisiana and the nation. Katrina caused $108 billion in damage, making it the costliest storm in U.S. history. Hurricane Dennis, July 2005. Hurricane Dennis hit Florida as a Category 3 storm in an area that was still recovering from the effects of Hurricane Ivan, which hit in late 2004. So, now do you agree with me that we are either extremely lucky or protected by an invisible hand? I mean, except on the ones formed in the Gulf of Mexico, or which formed too quickly. However, even with that kind of luck, we still have had so many costly hurricanes. Can you imagine what would happen if we were not so lucky? When the U.S. government conducted Project Storm Fury, it faced a lot of criticisms and lawsuits. Basically, if a storm comes our way, it is God's will. But if a storm comes our way after our intervention, you were the one to blame. No wonder no one dared to take credit for any success, and the project was marked as a failure, despite all records proving otherwise. Of course, I can't imagine using 70-year-old technology to combat the storms today. Maybe there are better ways now. For example, if we change the high and low pressure system affecting the storm, we can fight the battle away from land and away from attention, right? Please note that I have no proof of any kind of any weather modification which happened. But I do want to share the intriguing information I found and the questions I have on my mind. If there is a way to combat the storms, I hope it is revealed to the public so we can make sure it receives proper funding. We also should make sure it is done so not only us, but also our neighbors are kept out of harm's way. Can you imagine how much money could have been saved if we could have made Katrina a Category 3 instead of a Category 4 when she landed in New Orleans? How about Matthew? Is there something we could have done to lessen the damages? This is Ken Peters. Thank you for watching.